Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is crashing again. We can see that it's down 6% in the last 24 hours, 7% over the last seven days. We're going to look at the fundamentals. We're going to look at the news. Nothing much has really changed and it's only improving. So I've got a lot of great news about Bitcoin and the major institutions buying. We're also going to look at the Ethereum chart, update that and touch into a little Dogecoin. So if you like the sound of that, leave us a like down below right here. Hit that like button. Let's get it to 1500 likes today. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you enjoy investing in cryptocurrencies and learning how to rotate those profits out. Remember, it's the professionals that learn how to sell. All right, let's dive across. First things first, market cap, we have dipped under $1.5 trillion, 1.438. I think we're going to go back up. I'm pretty confident we are going to see multi-trillion dollar market caps during this bull cycle. Bitcoin, we are at 47,500. Ethereum, just a touch under $1,500. Cardano, our beloved ADA, $1.08. We're also going to talk about Polkadot in some other videos today, so stick around for that. I've got a Cardano video coming up. I've got a Cardano killer coming up. Remember, this is your home of hopium free content. So uh, subscribe to that if you want to see that coming up. I'm going to get out about three videos today, so let's, let's pump it out. I've done some deep research. Let's have a look. Fear and Greed 55. We have dived a lot over the last few days. You know, we check this out every day. Some guys are asking, what is this website that they can look at themselves, which is great. You're doing your own research. I'm just looking at this site here, alternative.me forward slash crypto fear and greed index. So just type that into Google. You will find it. Uh, the good news here is that we are starting to cool off, but we are not diving so hard in the market. Now, some people might think that we are crashing out of nowhere. But honestly, this is really great news to just settle the market, just cool the flames a little bit, because we have been well and truly up in the extreme greed for about a month now since the last crash we saw in um, early to mid January. So this is looking really good. 55. We're just at greed. If we start getting down to these levels, we really want to see it spike out. You know, the fear section, we want to see it spike out of there. But even touching fear is is a great thing. I think. So uh, looking at this, we're, we're doing pretty well. We're just cooling off. Now, I'm going to also talk about Coinbase IPO today. Reason being is it's hot in the news and some guys, some people want to be investing in stocks as well. Stocks that are exposed to cryptocurrency and blockchain. And of course, Coinbase, I'm going to assume you know what Coinbase is. It's another exchange, one of the largest exchanges in the world. Uh, basically, they're looking to list on the uh, US indices. So it's going to list on the US stock exchanges. So uh, at the moment, Coinbase IPO 52, it's doing very well in the searches, especially against Bitcoin crash, which is well up to its maximum level it has ever seen in the last 12 months. Let's bring this back to five years. We're looking at worldwide and just see where Bitcoin crash sits to see how we fare against the 2017 crash. Now, of course, Coinbase IPO is probably not going to feature in that at all. My internet has kicked in. We are looking at a level that we haven't seen since the 2017 crashes, but we're still a long, long way from that old Bitcoin top in 2017. This is looking all right in, in my opinion, like it's nothing to be concerned about yet. So we'll keep a track of this as well, this term Bitcoin crash. And if you want to do that own research yourself, Google Trend Words, put in these words here and you will see the data come up yourself. All right, let's have a look at some of the news now. Crypto firm Kraken sees roughly 10 billion valuation. Not much else to this, but just wanted to bring it up because we're looking at Coinbase IPO and the possible valuations uh, that we could see for Coinbase. Now, sure, it's out there, but we'll have to see what it comes out as when it's listed on the, the US stock exchanges. So 10 billion. Coinbase is uh, runs about double the amount of uh, volume that Kraken does. So there's just kind of like a rough metric. They're looking at a possible valuation may surpass 10 billion in this round. So there's possibly more rounds to go. But for now, if this is all the data we have. And we think that Coinbase should be worth about double because it has double the uh, it has double the, the, the volume, 20 billion. Let's move on. 
Kathy Wood says Bitcoin has trillions in market cap potential. All right, so this is on Bloomberg. Uh, I think it's a paid subscription. I've got a few of those. So basically, Kathy goes into how Bitcoin can be worth multi-trillion dollars in this cycle. Now that gets up to her valuation, which we've looked at before, of around four hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin if all of the uh, S and P five hundred companies put in just ten percent of their cash reserves. That could easily boost Bitcoin to $450,000 per one Bitcoin. So there could be a lot of growth to go. Kathy goes on to discuss that it's an insurance policy and a hedge, especially in a world of low rates and quantitative easing. There are even instances when it acts as a risk off asset. And we've only ever known Bitcoin to be a risk on asset. So good to see that we're starting to get in that space of gold and possibly take a lot of gold's market cap. So that, that's also said here as well, a positive cue for gold. But gold is down at the same time, whereas Bitcoin is up. Hopefully we see Gary Gensler can, uh, be confirmed as the chairman of the SEC. So this is all going to be positive stuff and that could really boost Bitcoin's price. So although it sounds boring, Keep an eye on this. If you see something like that, it's confirmed as the chairman. Looking good for Bitcoin. Next piece, Coinbase IPO, five things to know about it. So I've just taken a couple of the sections which I think are reasonably important for us to look out for. Coinbase has an ambition to echo those of Robinhood markets. Don't worry, whatever we think about Robinhood and what they've done with GameStop and canceling people's accounts or halting people's trading, Forget that. We're looking at the macro scale here. What can Robinhood be worth? What is it worth more, more so? And then what can Coinbase get from this? Coinbase is a company with an ambitious vision to create more economic freedom for every person and business. Now, I think that's a load of bullshit, but that's their mission. That's what they're going with. I don't think they're creating more economic freedom for every person and business. Their business model is to make fees. And when markets are volatile, they make more money. It's simple as that. So cryptocurrency, we know there's a lot of traders. We know there's a lot of degenerates. We know there are a lot of gamblers. People love to trade. And a lot of people don't know what they're doing in this space, especially with trading. So it's easy for them to make a hell of a lot of money when things are crazy. Biggest risk factor, no doubt biggest risk factor for Coinbase is it's bet on an unproven asset class. Yes, cryptocurrency has only been around a decade. It's unproven in that sense. That's a huge risk factor. How large is Coinbase? We just looked at this. It's around $3 billion market cap. Binance is around a $24 billion market cap from this screenshot, of course. So that's it's about one eighth of Binance and Kraken is about 1.6. So it's about half the value of Coinbase. We just talked about Kraken as well. Lastly, there are other competitors to Coinbase. So maybe once these get listed as well, something like Gemini run by Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss, who famously use their Facebook settlements to invest in Bitcoin. So there's those competitors as well, but I think Coinbase is far out in front at this point. So I expect that to be a fantastic IPO for, uh, for people looking to invest in stocks, which are exposed to blockchain. Ah, Musk. Musk says he hopes rumors that he's in the SEC's doghouse are true. This one's just talking about uh, the CEO of Tesla. We know Elon Musk loves to tweet about Doge. CEO of electric vehicle maker who has the hate-hate relationship with SEC seems to relish the idea of another go-round with the regulatory body. In 2018, Musk famous, famously said, I do not respect the SEC. So basically, they want to try and investigate him, but it could just be rumors at this point. That might have an effect on the Tesla price. For the Doge price, I don't think it's really going to make any difference. At this point, Doge is just playing around like a meme that it is intended to be, up and down with the Twitter tweets, and that's about it. Moving on, Three Arrows Capital CEO says Bitcoin could hit $2.5 million in super cycle top. Here's why. All right, first thing, two and a half million dollars is ridiculous in this cycle. I wish it gets to two and a half million. Great, you know, it, it's gonna be huge returns from where we currently are. Super cycle, pay attention to these words, especially when we get closer to the major top. If not, maybe we're at the top and we're seeing this nonsense now. Two and a half million dollar Bitcoin in a super cycle. Notice the wording out there. Super cycle is going to be settled over and over and over again. And then that skews vision 
when we see a market peak, right? This is how we lose money when the market's shooting up. We've made gains, huge gains from the bottoms. We don't sell out at the top because we believe we're going to see a million dollar Bitcoin, a two and a half million dollar Bitcoin, a super cycle. Pay attention to that. Just really, really note that. I, I want you guys to make profits from cryptocurrency and retain as much of your cryptocurrency or your worth as possible in any means that you need to legally. All right. But don't get thrown around with the sort of super cycle BS two and a half million dollar nonsense. All right. There is reason for it. It could get there. Right. It but getting there in this cycle is a little bit of hogwash, especially with these sort of market caps that it would need to hit considering the amount of money out there in the world and how that money has to come into the market. It's possible, probably not in the next two years. All right. You can come back, screenshot this video, play it back to me if we end up hitting two and a half million dollars in this super cycle. Next piece, cryptocurrency adoption passes another milestone, surpassing 100 million users. I'm just bringing this up because we are looking at a whole lot of positive fundamentals that are really driving the space, yet we've just seen a few day correction. All right, so that's that's what I'm really emphasizing here. There's a lot of positive news. 13,000 uh, Bitcoin flows out of Coinbase, suggesting institutions are buying Bitcoin dips. So 13,000 BTC leaving Coinbase. They're not staying in Coinbase to be traded and be dumped. They're gone. They're gone. All right, that's where we're at. All right, Ethereum, we'll have a look at that as well. Ethereum's Berlin hard fork tentatively scheduled for April 14th. Miners aren't happy, so they are looking to have a community call planned for this Friday. So this is for EIP-1559. Basically, this is the hard fork coming up later on. So I'm bringing this up because we see a lot of the hard fork news coming out for Cardano, which, like I've said earlier, I've got another video coming out today on Cardano. Check it out, subscribe below, like the video up. Uh, basically, this is going to be the narrative, I believe, for a lot of this bull market. There is a hard fork coming up. We're getting a lot of growth happening. Markets will run up into these news pieces, potentially fall. I'm not saying dump and crash, but it's likely, potentially, that we'll see falls after these news pieces are out. We know it's the news. Basically, that's the rumor part as the market runs into the news and then the announcement the date of the news happening is the news. The old saying, buy the rumor, sell the news, that's how it's worked into the system. You know it's news already, but the way I've seen it work is that it's the rumor stage until we get to the date of the event occurring. And once the event has occurred, that's the news part, it's, it's confirmed. Sometimes it doesn't run up into that date and it falls short by hours or days. And people are just front running the news event actually occurring, they know it's about to occur. So that's what I wanted to leave with for Ethereum. We can be aware of that. We've got about six or seven weeks to go before this April 14th date. We may see Ethereum continue to lead up into that date if Bitcoin holds its ground. These Coinbase insiders will get very rich when it goes public. So maybe we'll see a dump on it, maybe we won't, but I think we'll probably see a pretty big run up. It'll be a highly anticipated IPO with big boostings as we uh, launch onto the market. Coinbase S1 reveals the firm's biggest shareholders, so we know they're out there. And here we are, some of the largest holders. VC firm, uh, co-founders, poised to make billions. Keep note of that as well. These guys probably will cash out a little bit. Coinbase holds 230 million in Bitcoin on its balance sheets. Crypto exchange Coinbase has been holding cryptocurrency on its balance sheet since 2012. It's now revealed how much it holds. So it's probably had to reveal this leading up to the uh, IPO, so 230 million in Bitcoin. It's nothing like MicroStrategies or Tesla. We would have thought they would have a lot more, but not bad nonetheless. Quarter of a, nearly a quarter of a billion dollars there. So uh, another big holder of Bitcoin, guys. A lot of, a lot of Bitcoin. Good news here. Bitcoin tops 51 grand as Coinbase releases S1. So this is for the filing of uh, the pre-IPO. Obviously, we know Bitcoin's now down around 47, but these articles get old very quickly. You know, this is from today. Robin Hood has added 6 million new crypto users in 2021. 6 million people. The trading platform has had its share of problems this year, but it claims that lots of people want to use its crypto app. 
So personally, I'm putting this here because I would say if you're new, don't buy crypto from Robinhood. Go use a real exchange. You cannot transfer your crypto off Robinhood. So it's not real crypto. In my thoughts, my opinion, that's just what I would do. I would not be using Robinhood. Go and use something that you can withdraw the crypto from so that you can keep it safe. That's what crypto is about. You become your own bank. I know most of you probably get that, but there's a few out there. Craig Wright, now this is some of the funny stuff. Uh, sues Bitcoin developer to hand over his stolen keys. I'm bringing this up because if you know anything about Bitcoin history, there was a Mt. Gox uh, hack, which was hacked for hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin at the time. Craig Wright looks like he is the one who stole those. So he is now asking, he is now suing Bitcoin developers to give back his keys, which are his Bitcoin. Looks like he's just trying to play silly buggers. Looking at this tweet, this shows Craig Wright was well, owns the stolen Bitcoin from Mt. Gox. I will post this one in the link down below as well. I'll keep this tweet here so you guys can read it. Essentially, it shows uh, a, a discussion between Mark Mt. Gox. It has a recipient, an address, one fee X, and then the last few digits are six UF, and then Tulip, which is uh, Craig Wright's company, Tulip Trading is the owner of this address. You can see right here, one fee X, six UF. All right, so I'll leave this tweet down below if you guys want to check that out. Essentially, it looks like Craig Wright stole it from Mt. Gox, and now he's suing Bitcoin to get the stolen Bitcoin back. Look, it's on Twitter. Who knows how true all of this stuff is? Either way, it's uh, pretty funny stuff. And really, from that post, Bitcoin SV, trash. That's my opinion. I would not be touching Bitcoin SV. We'll probably see some pumps in it. it might be a good trade. Long-term trash. Crypto exchange accidentally sold customers Bitcoin for six grand. So it was a Filipino exchange that did this. They are not giving the customers the Bitcoin sold for six grand because they don't believe it ever happened. Bitcoin's current, uh, the price at the time was $48,000. All right, I'm just leaving you with some funny bits and pieces. All right. Bitcoin USD, we're finally at the charts, guys. Uh, we're looking at a weekly chart. This is our first down week since the crash in mid-January. So these are these bars are one week. Now I want to look at a couple of things here. We have the MAs. A lot of people love using moving averages. I look at them too. I want to see if we're going to bounce off any of these moving averages. I don't use them to trade. They're just there as some guide. I definitely don't use them to trade at all. Let's turn off the 50. Currently, I'm using the FIB, right? We connected to the bottom and the top, and we've had a retracement down to the 61.8%, which is $47,000. That's still very strong. It's good to have retracements like this. 50% would be fantastic. We know that's not a FIB number, but 50% comes up a lot. So this is 43,595. And worst case scenario for me is $40,000. I think if we find some support, maybe we have a wick down or a spike into the, the high 30s, no problems. But I wanna be closing above 40,000, which is the 61% retracement from the top. So all in all, Bitcoin is still looking very strong. Very, very strong, nice dip buying opportunities, especially with all the news that I've already covered in today's video. So you've got a ton of positive news coming out from the big boys, the big money, and now on the charts, it is also looking reasonably strong. The breakdown from here, what we don't want to see is too much time spent in the previous zone. So this was the previous accumulation zone. We don't want to see it between 29 and 42 for too long. Definitely want to hold a higher reaccumulation zone above the previous resistance and call that support. Just simple, uh, straightforward technical analysis. Now, these diagonals that I've uh, recently drawn on the charts, I, I'm using them as a logarithmic resistance on the way up. I've got it connected to the previous top and I'm using one of the tops that we hit just out of the triple top. So that's a significant top in my opinion because that was a time that could have held the market up but we found a lot of strength and burst through that top. So this is, this is positive. I, I will readjust this if we need to throughout the bull market but for now, looks like we've found some resistance at the logarithmic uh, at the logarithmic resistance using top to top. Why I'm using this is because it happened last time. 
We saw that in the last bull cycle. Doesn't mean it's going to happen again, but there are possibilities of it happening again. So once Bitcoin was able to break through, now I'm going to take this one off. This was one of the tops, 1300, just as we broke out of the all time high. Then I connected to another top. And as Bitcoin rose and rose and rose, it finally broke through and that was the end of the market. Came back, found it a support, but broke through the support. So that's why I'm using it here. After it broke through the logarithmic resistance, there was one, two, three weeks into the high. One week down, side, lower swing top, failed, and then a break. So we only managed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks above the logarithmic resistance. So that, to me, I'm gonna be following this and we're gonna readjust it on the channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and follow along with the Bitcoin journey here. Now, I said we would take a look at Ethereum. We're gonna do that right now. Ethereum versus USD is here, 1478. All right, so we've had a nice pullback. We have not had a down week on Ethereum since 21st of December. This is, easy this is fine this is natural that's that's looking very very good so the next thing i want to put on here is the uh the fibonacci retracement using that low and this high we've only seen it come back 30 the, the 38 percent here's the 50 percent at 1300 worst case scenario 1100 i don't think we'll see a sub one thousand dollar ethereum again just according to this fibonacci the moving average is sitting around 937, but of course that's gonna continue up as well. So provided we stay up at these levels between the 1100 and the 1500, I think it's a good reaccumulation zone for Ethereum before a potential uh, takeoff. So that's looking good as well. Let's have one last look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin. So 0 0.031 strong, strong again. You can see that with this FIB I've got here is exactly the same FIB, low to high. Uh, the week hasn't finished. We're at three days to go, two days, 21 hours. We want to see it close above the 38%, which is a 61% drop. It's just sitting around the 20 week moving average, but I'm not so overly concerned with that. So let's get rid of it. Basically, this is a good looking fib. It's a good looking push up, uh, a retracement. And I think we're going to get another solid move from Ethereum. So all of that is lining up reasonably well for Ethereum. That's a look at tons of Bitcoin news. A little bit on Doge, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Ethereum, USD, looking like good times for reaccumulation if, personally, because it's not financial advice, if I didn't already have a position. This looks like a good time. It's nice to buy into resets rather than as markets are really peaking out. Resets or breakouts, and we haven't seen a breakout for a while, this is a reset. If you enjoyed the video, Subscribe, like the video, let's get it to 1500 likes. Stick around for the video I've got coming up on Cardano. I've got another Litecoin, uh, Chainlink, and a potential good looking trade that looks like it could be a Ethereum and Cardano killer. So stick around for that. I say that with inverted commas because you know I think these other projects are fantastic, Ethereum, Cardano, but the setup on these other stocks, uh, cryptos are looking very good. So stick around for that, like the video up, join me on Instagram where I post my daily retirement fund updates and answer your Q and A's over there. So go follow me on Instagram and ask your questions. The Investor Accelerator membership is still live. Go and check that out down below. If you put in your email address, you will get 15% off for a limited time. Once that runs out, it runs out. Join us 12 months, learn how to trade and invest, rotate your profits into other asset classes. So learn all about that with a community. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.